John Hollinger in The Athletic has a backstory on how the Mavs went from lottery to the finals. And obviously tanking and getting Derek Lively uh, was a big part of that. But he points back to the Mavs against Charlotte last year on 37 losses. And this was a back-to-back uh, game, both against the Hornets, that if the Mavs wanted to make the playoffs, they needed to win both. Well, P.J. Washington went the hell off in those games. He averaged 25 points, Hornets win. He defended Doncic in a lot of big possessions, showing you know, the Mavs exactly what he was capable of on the perimeter. So it simultaneously pushed the Mavs into the lottery, uh, or you know, down the path of 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 uh, you know deciding to tank in the final week because they were like, well, crap, if we can't even beat the Hornets, it's time to go, and it pushed them towards appreciating PJ Washington uh, a little bit more. John writes, no doubt, the humiliation of how last season uh, uh, ended uh, helped accomplish the goal, and several teams, including the Warriors in 2012, used the same strategy, where. Um, the league is actually looking at uh, considering eliminating the ability to have picks 5 through 12 protected in the future because of the temptation for those teams to tank mm. instead of being one of the last teams into the playoffs. You can't mess with that. I know. You can't I, do that. I, I think it's it's too much nitpicking. If a yeah. couple of teams do it over hey, a, if a, you If you get to the end and you determine you're not good enough yeah. and your best way of doing this is to – to not play hard the last few games, you, you can't you can't do that to people. You know, it's a strategy. It's a good strategy. You you play hard all year, and all of a sudden, you know, hey, we're not good enough. We're losing too many games. We're too banged up. Yeah, let's try and turn turn our fortunes around. Yeah, you know? like you don't need to be so myopic and so small minded thinking about right here and right now. We're yeah. trying trying to have some big picture winning. Here. Yes. So yeah, we're trying to get better. We're not good enough. We don't want to be on that treadmill that Mark uh, Cuban used to talk about, treadmill of mediocrity. Yeah. You know, we're hey, we're gonna we're gonna tank this thing up, and we're gonna you know we have a we have confidence that the position we're in, we got a player that we like that we potentially can get that'll make a difference here, and and it did. I mean, they made some trades. They drafted a key player. And all because of losing games to Charlotte. They determined they weren't good enough. And that's every team has that crossroads when they get to the end. I admire the self awareness. I absolutely do too. And how open they were about it too. Yeah. They just yeah. they, okay, this that's what, what, that's yeah. what the NBA did. Like, well, that's true, the NBA. Were, that's but. fine. The Mavericks went ahead and paid their fine, and now they're sitting here. No, in the usually, usually yeah, with worth the Mavs, every penny. usually with the Mavs, that strategy doesn't work. Like Cuban will do something that. F it up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, when he and, tries to outthink the room, yeah, it, yeah. It, it has not gone well. But dang it, it did when they tanked for Luca, and yeah. it did when they tanked to get Lively ultimately. And it's it's funny because of how much of a battle that conversation has been in DFW over the last decade. And, you know, to the point that Mark Cuban was actually at one point late in Dirk's career leading the We Don't Tank Brigade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so many of his fans and employees, I remember, would yell so loud at Mike Bassick on the text and on social media about this. And it was a it was a big debate. And I, I do think this development forever ends it because that is one huge thing. You see what's going on with San Antonio. like. And to Brian's point, I don't think you can do away with tanking entirely. It's no. already been a huge part. And I think they have a pretty good handle on it with how they uh, currently well, stack the draft lottery. Yeah, but what they need to figure out, and correct me if I'm wrong on this one, guys, Detroit has been the worst team the last couple of years with this, you know, with their record. Yes. And the fact that they're picking three, four, or five, I, I don't see with the draft lottery. Yeah, see, I I'm not I'm not for that. I mean, I think the NFL does it the right way. If you're the worst team, you get the first pick, you know. And I, I, I to me, I I look at Detroit and I'm thinking like their fans, like man, we've sucked bad the but, last couple of years, and we we got the third, fourth, fifth <laughs> overall pick. Yeah, you definitely I mean, don't care about the fan base of, you the, don't. of the of those teams for sure. It, it turned it turned into a tank fest though for like the bottom ten teams as, as soon as they got to Halloween. They were like, well, all right, guys. Yeah. But we don't care about those teams anyways. But we care about the good teams. We care about probably five teams, and that's it. So as long as you got five good teams that are going to be awesome, when we get to the playoffs and we got legit matchups, and this is cool. Awesome. I don't want to watch Detroit, whether they're trying or not. Well, no, I'd like to, I would like to see teams have that fan base have the opportunity for their teams to get better. No, I Detroit, agree. Detroit is not going to get better yes. picking, like, being the worst team, you know, 
And, yeah. and then all of a sudden they have the fifth overall pick. Which was my whole exactly. argument a couple of weeks ago for the draft lottery. I, I mean, think I, they, they got pushed back from their television partners, though. Like, we don't want to put on uh, yeah. horrible, but how atrocious. Is this, how is this helping? They were just horrible and atrocious. So many, but you got to give them a chance to get better. Right yeah, now, you, now they got to give them a chance to get better. So now they're still going to suck really, really bad, yeah. and then they're not going to get the number one overall pick, and so they're going to pick the fifth best player, and it's not going to be a franchise altering thing. And then they're going to suck again. They're going to suck again, and they're going to suck again. And they're bad because yeah. they're genuinely bad. They're not even tanking. They're I, just I not just, good. I well, there just, was a lot of tanking going on. That's why they was. adjusted the lottery. No format. question, there yeah. was one hundred percent. But I still don't even know that like the lottery is the reason why we're we're not getting tanking. I still think teams are or. Will. Well, they've yeah. de-incentivized it so hard they that have. now teams aren't putting uh, their veterans out to pasture like, no, please go away after the All-Star yeah. break. Yes. We want you to You're stay away that. from the gym. Abs- that's at, true. At least as a fan, you have credible NBA-level veterans that you're going to go watch, where you know, a lot of them turned it into basically a glorified G League. I, I think yeah. and, you know, if you're a cable partner throwing in billions of dollars... Maybe it doesn't make that big of a deal, but you need that assurance for your your clients that this isn't going to turn into amateur hour, you know, a third of the way into the season. I think at least that's what the NBA was was working on here. But other than Washington Gafford Lively, what are the other things you look at as far as what has made this Mavs team so much better? I think obviously the Going coaching staff. Kyrie. Yes, you already had Kyrie last year at this well, time. Well, I'm just saying, if you talk about moves that they've made along sure, yeah, the way. To, to get here. Yeah. The, the other two that were this year, it's certainly, as you mentioned, the draft with Lively. I mean, he's been better than anybody thought. And credit to Nico Harrison for that, right? Nico Harrison went back and he's like, I'm watching AAU Derek Lively. That's the type of dude that I'm envisioning here. Not Duke version of Derek Lively that we were all talking about. Like, ah, oh, that guy? That's the dude you're expecting to be like a dominant rookie center? No, Derek Lively's been awesome. And then, of course, Derek Jones Jr. And I get it. Derek Jones Jr., the first two games of this series offensively he's given you nothing but for the majority of the season and this postseason run he had and you cannot go ahead and deny what he's done for you when it comes to the defensive end of the floor he's been brilliant did yeah. you mention about coaching i did yeah See, briefly. Did, did didn't last year at this time like the mavs had like they changed up offensive coaches defensive coaches they went out and got new guys on the bench and then all of a sudden, it's like that didn't really really work and they changed things back again it's a good point they, you know that that's like with Gary St. Jean, and I'm just throwing, I think he was a guy. But they, there were names that they brought in, like, you know, that they, they were like, okay, you know, these were guys that maybe Rick had, and like, okay, we're going to move on from. But then they turned back and they said, okay, wait, maybe we didn't do the right thing. You know, I think that, I think them shuffling their coaching staff this season from what it was last season might have turned things around for him a little bit, too. Well, they, they've come up with incredible answers and built an awesome defense. I think you look at Jason Kidd, you look at the ability of Luka and Kyrie to figure out their late-game situations and make it the most clutch team in the league after struggling to even figure out who was going to take the final shots in the few games they did play together last year. They had they had buzzers going off with the ball and still one of their hands because they couldn't figure out who was supposed to. And it was like, oh, now, it's, dang it, the buzzer already went off. We're not even getting a shot off here. Yeah, but yeah, Sean, Sean Sweeney, Marco Milich, yeah. Jared Dudley, God Sham God, uh, Keith Vaney, uh, Josh Brog- Broghammer. Uh, these these guys, I think, deserve a ton of credit. Even though I don't recognize some of their names, Eric yeah, Hughes. They, they, they did. Hammer. They tried. The Brohammers are a basketball family. <laughs> they they tried to do some things with the like you said. I mentioned Gary St. Jean. I think they got him from the Lakers. Yeah, it was a hell of a pull, Gary St. Jean. Yeah, and they you know they got all these guys, and all of a sudden you're like going, well, damn. I mean, none of these guys are helping you get any better. The offense not getting any better. Defense yeah. not getting any better. You know, teams Special falling teams. apart. And and they and they they absolutely did. I mean, adding Jared Dudley and guys like that, I think kind of, you know, I think that kind of turned some things around. Sweeney, I think Sweeney, from what I understand, Sweeney was a an offensive coach. He started off as a defensive coach, played better than they made him an offensive coach, and then the defense started struggling. They put him back on defense, and you know they they played a lot better. You know, so there, there's some there's some shifting around shifting around there. That has made a, a difference for these guys. Getting rid of Cubans as black and gold B, that's going to pay huge dividends. Cannot wait to see this team with a full calendar year of not having Cuban behind them.